we can learn how we might also follow God's call. The book is In the Name of Jesus, and it is $10.50 from Coach Perry, and it is also cheaper on Kindle and Amazon. If you would like uh, the book ordered for you, let uh, Pastor Ben know as soon as possible. The studies will be on Tuesdays at 11 and 7, starting October 4th. Okay, notice in your bulletin we've got a lot of things also happening. We do have on October 9th the crop walk. Uh, and on November 19th, there will be a church yard sale and bake sale. Please read the details so because we're not having clothing in all this time and so, uh, they are focusing on Christmas items and such. Uh, and there are several other announcements regarding uh, uh, Ram House on and other opportunities for volunteering. Also, before we begin, I would like to introduce our newest employee, Madeline Showalter. Our Christian Education Coordinator, and uh, have to be uh, related to Hannah, because <laughs> they're sisters. Uh, so uh, please make her feel welcome as you uh, have an opportunity to uh, meet her today and in the future. Any other announcements that you can make? In that way. Oh, in the back. Yeah, I just wanted to announce that um, for the next couple weeks until the crop walk, which is the ninth, I will be out of the gathering area collecting donations or information on people that want to walk. So I'll be out there each Sunday if you have any questions or you want to register that day. Okay, uh, Trina was saying that for the next couple of weeks, for those who want to sign up for the crop walk, she'll be set up out here in, in the gathering area to uh, take your names and sign you up for the crop wall. Anything else? Okay, let's go ahead and uh, prepare them for our worship time.
as much as we have. And our job is to help. In your son's precious name, we pray. Amen. Oh, Thank you for the wonderful grace that we receive from you when we are humble and obedient to your word. We pray your great blessings and healing on those we have mentioned here today. Dave Barker, Bill Murdoch, <coughs> Connie Whip, Connie McCormick, George Carver, Sandy Whitley, Phoebe McAnally, and Mary Brill. And all of those, Father, that we know who need your presence this hour. We pray that you would bless them, and heal them, and show them your grace. All of these things we 
offer in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father,
Christ. He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. May we pray. Father, we thank you for these moments we can spend at your table. We ask, Father, that you would bless this bread that we take, which represents Christ's bread. Give us strength. Grant your grace that we may be your children. We ask these things in Christ's holy name.
scripture reading this morning is taken from Luke's Gospel, 16th chapter, and verses 1 through 13. Jesus told his disciples, There was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management, because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, What shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. Uh, I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 800 gallons of olive oil, they replied. The manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 400. Then he asked the second, and how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill, and make it 800. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself, so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees who loved money heard all this and were, were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of men, but God knows your hearts. What is highly valued among men is detestable in God's sight. This is the word of the Lord. Picture this. Somewhere in America, a man named Otis finds a wallet containing $2,000. Being an honest man, he turns it in to the police station. The authorities tell him that if no one comes forward within 30 days to claim the wallet, then he can come back and claim it for his own. It is now day 31 in the morning, and Otis and his wife Francine anxiously await a phone call telling them to come claim the money. Won't you join me as we listen in and the twilight zone?
scripture reading, Jesus tells us about a man. A man who has a vast amount of resources under his care, but they're not his resources. They're his master's resources to put to work, that his master's domain might be expanded. When he tells the story, he's telling us a story as well, a story about ourselves. He's telling us that we have resources, and the resources that we have, we are supposed to put to work, because they're not ours. We're supposed to use those resources so that God, our Lord, and his kingdom might be expanded here on earth. How do we put those resources to work as individuals and as a church? Let's take a look at what they are, what we do with them and what more we can do so that we can work together to expand God's kingdom here on earth. Our property is where we start. This is what we have. This is one of the great resources that we have. What we do here together, whether it's our meals or our worship, our meetings, our Sunday school classes, our Bible studies, our women's groups, our youth and children's activities, it is in this building that we are able to start to form our community. It is our use of this building that allows us to put, to put to work one of God's best resources for us. Within this building, we get our start. We know how we can work together and what we need to do together. With this building, we have the foundation for our success. Through our finances, through our people, through our talents, we have another great resource, a resource that allows us to move beyond just a static building, but to life. It is in our financial resources that we are allowed and able to take care of this building, to take care of each other, to reach out. It is through our talents and our time that we keep this building up. It is the giving of the property ministry of their time and talents to paint, to replace light bulbs, to dig up roses, to plant new shrubs, to work together, that we are able to have this beautiful space where we can worship together. It is through our time and our talents that this building is kept up and that our ministries can go forward. So what are those ministries that we work together to give? What are those ministries that we do together we start with our worship ministry. This is the central activity of our church each week. We gather here in this space to worship God, to be reminded of the one who has given us life, to be reminded of the one who has helped us along the way, to be reminded of the one who has provided us with salvation and redemption. We gather here centrally at this table, this table where we find that salvation. It is through the ministries of our worship, of our deacons, of our elders, that we are able to gather in this place. Our worship ministry provides our music, provides skits, provides worship leaders and scripture readers, those who do our moments with children. It is in our worship ministry that we find our centered place. It is through our deacons that our table is prepared each week, that our communion and our offering are served, and it is by our elders' work that our communion is prepared spiritually, and it is by their work that our, we are led in prayer and in spirituality together. In our worship together, it is when we give of our talents that our worship is made so much better. It is through our musicians who give of their talents. It is through those who work in drama that get a, give of their talents. Those who provide worship leadership or work with the children, that we are able to have our worship each week, that it be fulfilling and meaningful for all of us, and that we might all be drawn together to God. These pews are filled with talents that we don't even always know about. And so as we gather and worship, we learn about each other as well. It is through our worship ministry that not only each week we have a Sunday morning worship, but we have our special services throughout the year as well. 
from our worship ministry, we move out. We move down to our education wing, being reminded of all of the teaching that we receive and that we give here at Fort Lewis Christian Church. It is together in our education wing that we help uplift each other, that we learn and we grow, that we are stretched and pulled so that we might be better followers of Jesus Christ. The word disciples, the word by which our denomination is known, means students. And so it is here that we are formed as the disciples of Jesus Christ, as those who seek to learn from him and follow after him. It is in these rooms that children, the teenagers, the adults, the seniors, that all of us are able to continue to learn no matter how old or young we are. It is together in the study of scripture, in the study of our lives, in the study of books, that we learn about what God is doing. It is in these places that we also provide for a future generation. Jesus tells us in this morning's story that what the shrewd manager does is he gives to those who may not be able to give back to him immediately, but in the long term they can provide. It is in providing for our children and our youth that we know we are providing for something more permanent here, something that is more long lasting. And so together we work to make sure that these children are raised so that our church will have that future. And so that the church of Jesus Christ throughout our world will have that future. It is by our teachers, by our students, by our parents, by everyone who is involved with these educational ministries that we are able to do what we do, that we are able to learn and grow together. And so in these rooms, we find teachers, we find students, and we find oftentimes the teachers are learning from the students and the students are teaching each other. It is in this work that we learn and grow together, but also provide for a future. There are ministries that we do that don't necessarily fit under just one heading. We have our disciple players, our praise bands, yes, plural, we have for Christ and praise work. It is these ministries that, yes, they enhance our worship, but they also enhance our membership together. They provide for opportunities for creativity, for talents to come to the fore that we might not otherwise know. It is through these ministries that we learn. We learn about our history from skits by the disciple players. We learn about Christ and his life through music. It is through these ministries that we also do outreach. And even through these ministries that we helped to fund our Fill Our Cup campaign and the food bank. When we think about outreach, we usually think about going outside of the building to start. But in this room, we provided food for all of our local elementary schools, for the students who are in need of something to eat during spring break. It is in this room that the We Care baskets were put together. It is in this room that the We Care program takes place at its most high level. Our outreach can begin even right here as we seek to serve those around us. And in our outreach, we can move beyond them. It is also in this room, in our kitchen, in our disciple hall, that our membership ministries do most of their work. It is in these places that we gather together, not in any kind of necessarily organized way, but in a way that allows us to know each other better, to fellowship, to provide care and love for one another. It is in these places that our potluck meals gather, but it is also in these places where we provide food for grieving families. It is in these places where we gather at the table. At the very same tables, we can remember that Christ is here just as much as he is with us at the Lord's table. It is at that, these tables that we gather to celebrate together, to love one another, to lift each other up, and sometimes just to have a good time together. Within our building, we have many resources and we do many things. Our ministries here within the building 
are vibrant. But our ministries also call us beyond the building. They call us out our front door onto the main street of Salem, Virginia. They call us to downtown Roanoke for our work with the Ram House. They call us next door to work with Fort Lewis Elementary School. They may even call us across the street to work with Key Living Options, an organization that helps those who are adults and have special needs be able to live independently. It is out these doors also that we can encounter those who need to know and hear the love of Jesus Christ. As we walk around in our society and the hustle and the bustle of the world around us, that we learn to share love, to share the good news. This is our evangelism ministry, which reaches out to those who need to hear good news, to those who need to know hope and love. It is through our evangelism ministries, not just on our street, but on the individual streets that we find around our homes and in our lives that we can bring God's good news, bring the resource of love, of redemption, of salvation that has been entrusted to us, to those around us. When we walk out the door to do outreach and evangelism, we have the opportunity to share the kingdom of God with a world that is broken and hurting, to share love and hope with a world that darkness tries to scare. When we walk next door and we work with the children of Fort Lewis Elementary School, we have the opportunity to show them a different way, to show them that there are those who want to serve even five-year-olds, that there are those who want to care even for them. It is in our giving of our time and our talents and our finances that we give 10% every time to our outreach ministries. It is in our giving of these resources to those who may not even know how to repay us. That we follow Jesus' call. That we follow what Jesus tells us of the true manager. It is in our work together as a church that we are able to reach out. That we are able to do all of these ministries. That we are able to care for those who are hurting among our community and around us. It is in our work together that we are able to be one church, fulfilling God's calling for us here in West Salem and West, West Roanoke County and wherever else we may be. As individuals, what time, what talents, what resources do we have to step into these ministries, to work together? Where are you called to be? What ministry are you called to participate in? What are you called to give of your time, of your talents, of your financial resources, so that together we might continue to move forward to live the dream that God has placed in our hearts, that we might be a place where together we can show the world what love what hope and what joy is and where together we can find the fire that God has placed in our hearts to go and share the good news. Where are you called to be? Amen.
you are so led, and you would come to another church, and you might become part of this fellowship. As our bulletin says, we are on a journey. We're all at different places. And so we invite you to be a part of this fellowship. If you choose to become, come here making a confession of faith, yes, I do want to come and follow. We invite you to come now as we stand and sing our invitation to you. Seek me first. Be with us all.